asking yourself, what do I think, feel, want, and need is, is a good place to start. Like, what do I actually need to communicate? <laughs> mm-hmm. Is that a lot of women can't answer that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to be self-expressed when you're not sure what to express. Welcome to the Woman Warriors podcast. You worry, I worry, we all do. If you're paying attention to the world today, there's a lot for women to feel worried and anxious about. As we explore the worries with curiosity and compassion, we learn to live more authentically and unleash the warrior within, someone who is strong, capable, and resilient, come what may. It's time to stop battling against yourself and start using your powers to meet everyday challenges with energy, purpose, and bravery. Now here's your host, Elizabeth Cush. Today's episode is brought to you by three invitations to come home to you. If you'd like to learn how to feel more at home in yourself, you can sign up for your free invitations at elizabethcushcoaching.com. Hi, and welcome back to the Woman Warriors podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Cush, and today we have a pretty amazing guest, Dr. Julie Hanks, who wrote The Assertiveness Guide for Women, How to Communicate Your Needs, Set Healthy Boundaries, and Transform Your Relationships. But before we get started, I just wanted to check in with you. How's everybody doing out there? It has been a rough year. I do think that with the opening up and things easing, I hope that this summer will feel less stressful, but I also know just from talking to clients that even the opening up has been stressful too. Like how safe do I feel? How safe is this for my family or my loved ones? But I believe that as we all get vaccinated, this will become easier and less stressful. I'm excited about the new coaching programs that I've offered that are out there in the world now. So coaching on self-compassion, coaching on boundaries, or coaching on taking care of you. If this interests you or you want to know more, you can go to elizabethcushcoaching.com. Or you can listen to episode 156, where I talk about what inspired me to create the programs and put them out into the world. So today's episode is so, it resonates so much with my own coaching programs, but also my own journey. This is the talking to Julie Hanks about the assertiveness guide for women, as I've expressed here, sharing anger, sharing feelings, knowing feelings, setting boundaries, all of this has been a journey for me. Better understanding my attachment style. We're going to dive into all of that with Julie. And I think her book really, not that it's simple, it's easy to digest. It's manageable. It It's very clear and concise. And I think it kind of helped me connect the dots between attachment style, boundary setting, expressing feelings, and being assertive. So you should check it out. But today she's going to talk to us about the book and the process of how to help you feel and be and express your assertiveness more authentically. So Dr. Julie Hanks is a licensed psychotherapist, assistant professor, content creator, author, owner of Wasatch Family Therapy, and host of the Ask Dr. Julie Hanks podcast. With nearly 30 years experience, Dr. Hanks provides a safe place for healing conversations that educate and empower women to prioritize their dreams, revolutionize their families, and personalize their faith. And Julie's going to talk to us about how our attachment patterns impact how we express ourselves. I'm excited for this conversation, so let's get started. Hi, Julie, and welcome to the Woman Warriors podcast. Thanks so much for the invitation to be here, Elizabeth. Yeah, I'm excited to have you. 
I'm excited to talk to you about your book, but before we do that, if you could tell the listeners a little bit about you and what did inspire you to write the assertiveness guide for women, how to communicate your needs, set healthy boundaries and transform your relationships. Yeah, I'm a therapist and I've been doing therapy for close to 30 years now. Mm. And I specialized in working with women primarily. And the book was inspired by my work clinically Mm -hmm. and women struggling to stand up for themselves. Yeah. And then recognizing that it wasn't just saying the words, but they struggled to know what they needed to communicate in the first place, like what they wanted, what they needed, how they felt and thought. And so in the book, I talk about five different aspects of assertiveness and the second to last one is actually saying the words. The other ones are preparing mm. yourself to know what to say and to manage your emotions so you can communicate effectively. Yeah. And I think what I, well, I enjoyed the book in general because I too have, I, I also work with women mm-hmm. and I myself have struggled with finding a balance with like, what is assertiveness, you know, like really understanding that it's, It's so much more than just saying what you need. It's really about, I don't know, feeling it, owning it, you know, Mm -hmm. really being able to then also communicate it. But I love that you shared some of your own journey with this too in the book. It really resonated with me that talking about your own history with, you know, family and attachment Mm -hmm. patterns and stuff was really helpful for me. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Well, as I said to you, and there were times when I was reading the book and I'm like, she wrote this about me. Like, (laughs) (laughs) Um, do you hear that from other women who, you know, that, that have read your book? I do. I do. And I've worked with women for so long that I realize we're all, we're all dealing with similar things, Mm -hmm. different things too, but there are some commonalities And hopefully that I've included those in the book. And so that makes, that makes me happy that, that you could see yourself and Mm -hmm. uh, some of your patterns in the book. Definitely. And also the women that I work with too. And, you know, I think what resonated too, was that so much of which you describe, you said, it's not just about being assertive. It's about what's beneath it. Mm -hmm. What sort of created this struggle in the first place. And so I do see that attachment patterns are so linked to how, whether it's easy or hard to stand up for ourselves and be assertive, but could Mm -hmm. you talk to us a little bit about how you see that and how you explored that in the book? Yeah. So there is a continuum and on one side is an anxious attachment Mm -hmm. and that is People with an anxious attachment, and these are developed in childhood, and they can change through time, but they tend to be pretty consistent. So an anxious person is afraid of too much distance in relationships. So they tend to want to be closer to other people than other people want to be to them. Hmm. And so that creates some anxiety. In the middle is a secure attachment, Mm -hmm. and that is the ability to connect with people and also the ability to be by yourself. Mm-hmm. And then on the other end of the continuum is a, an avoidant attachment. And those people tend to want to be more distant than the people around them. So they aren't aware of their feelings as much, or they don't share. So they, they don't want to, it's not, they don't want to be close, but they've learned how to survive by shutting certain aspects down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so those patterns uh, impact our adult relationships and our willingness to assert ourselves. People or women with an anxious attachment and people, it's men and women, mm-hmm. they tend to be overwhelmed by their emotions where the avoidant end of the continuum, they tend to be disconnected. And so in the book, I talk about the importance of managing your emotions or connecting effectively to your emotion, because our emotion that we show when we're communicating is part of the communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, and I love your diagram of communicating the emotion with what it causes you to think, I guess, or what Mm -hmm. it creates in your thinking patterns and being able to sort of share that in a less like you make me feel like crap. It's Mm -hmm. more when you say this, I mean, could you talk to us a little bit about that too? Just yeah. Are you talking about the sentence stem? Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, okay. Yeah. yeah that's, yeah. that's uh, I use that all the time. Still. I always go yeah. back to that. I feel blank. So that's your emotion. And that is happy, mad, sad, scared, surprised, disgust, shame. Mm. So, or ver- versions of that, but it's not, I feel that you're being unfair. Right. Because that's actually a thought. So I feel your emotion. You plug that in when you blank the other's specific behavior. Mm-hmm. Because I think blank. Yeah. So it helps you sort your thought and your feeling, and then it give the person specific feedback. Yeah. And then the request part is it would mean a lot to me if blank, and then you make your request. Yeah. And it sounds like when you, when I see it in the book, you know, and even communicate with clients about, yeah, when you're bringing it back to yourself, it just opens the door for further communication versus shutting it down. Mm -hmm. But it can be hard to do in the moment when you're feeling all activated and all those feelings are charged up. Yeah, definitely. The things that I talk about in the book are skills that need to be practiced. Mm -hmm. And the more we practice, the better we get. And so it's okay to be just starting on this assertiveness journey, you know, wherever you are, it's, you can start there. Yeah. Yeah. And so with being assertive, it does take sort of laying the groundwork first. You know, you talked Mm -hmm. about having a better handle on and understanding your attachment pattern, but also Mm -hmm. understanding learning to communicate how you're feeling and under, mm-hmm. and identifying how you're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So the first aspect is self-reflection. And so that's understanding the attachment style and the patterns that you learned from your family. And the second is self-awareness, which is being able to identify what do I think, feel, want, and need? Mm. Because a lot of women I've worked with cannot answer those questions. (laughs) I would agree. Yeah. 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 It took me a long time to figure out what all, all of those, (laughs) those things. Me too. Me too. (laughs) We're a lot better at identifying our thoughts than our emotions. Well, and sometimes I think depending on the person, but I think too, if we're empathic or like we're picking up on what other people or what we think other people are, are feeling or thinking versus reflecting on how is this impacting me? Like, Mm -hmm. are they mad at me? Are they judging me? Are they sort of going to those thoughts versus Mm -hmm. checking in with like, okay, how am I feeling right now? Cause I'm feeling judged or I think I'm being judged, but what Mm -hmm. is that feeling that's beneath that? Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. So we need to get better. We need to practice reflecting on what's happening for us and identifying what we need, what we want, what we're feeling. Mm-hmm. And then what do we do from there? What, how do we get to the part of <laughs> <laughs> saying something, right? Uh, the ne- next aspect is self-soothing. And so for an anxious attachment style, that means calming yourself down so you can effectively communicate. Mm. And for more of an avoidant style, that means connecting with your emotions so there's some oomph behind what you say. Because if you're disconnected from your emotions, things don't land the same. You know, there's sometimes where you need to be intense about what you're talking about, you know, so people hear you. So those are kind of the different aspects that I cover under self-soothing. So being able to connect or calm yourself so then you can communicate effectively. Yeah. Well, that's, that's an interesting, I think when you talked about the avoidant attachment too, so yes, self-soothing and calming yourself, but then I think people, but women too, 
have a hard time, as you said, having some oomph behind it, showing the feeling, Mm -hmm. like being vulnerable and expressing what that feeling is. That can Mm -hmm. be scary. Oh yeah, it can, it can. And, and so having the skill of kind of modifying our emotions, Mm -hmm. depending on the situation and the context is really an important part of assertive communication. Mm. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Just the, the modifying of emotions? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're feeling overwhelmed by your emotions, that's mm-hmm. probably not a good time to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. You know, right. Yeah. Doing some deep breathing, kind of centering yourself. In the book, I give some examples of that. And, you know, that's an example of calming yourself down. So you can, you're, if you're an anxious style, your emotions will come through. You don't need to like overdo it because that overwhelms people. Right. And then on the other end, the more avoidant people, it's asking and connecting with the emotion. What am I feeling? What's going on with me? Wow, I am really upset and connecting and acknowledging and experiencing the emotion. Mm. And that helps get your point across. Yeah. Yeah. That totally, totally makes sense. And when you're working with women, typically, I know you talk a little bit about this in the book and attachment styles. For some people, this is new information. And so what leads us to be either anxious or avoidant or in secure. the middle? Secure. Yeah. 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 What, what, what happens? Yeah. So in our early childhood relationships, depending on how responsive our caregivers were, we develop strategies to survive. Some people develop, say, you didn't get enough validation or mirroring from your parents. You might develop an anxious style. Mm -hmm. Say your parents were really disconnected or, or dismissive. You may shut down your emotions in order to survive. So there's strategies to help us stay connected to our caregivers. But once we grow up, they don't always serve us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the goal is to develop a secure attachment, which is, you know, you, you are aware of your feelings, thoughts, needs, and wants. And you also are aware of other people's. And you can connect with your emotion. You can be close to people. And you can also be with yourself. Hmm. And I think, you know, just what you're describing is so important to highlight that no matter what you learned as a child, we can relearn, we can Mm -hmm. sort of reparent or reteach ourselves how to feel more secure. Right, right. And that's actually what therapy does is it's, you know, an earned secure attachment. Basically, you didn't, didn't get it in your family, but you can do the work yourself or with a therapist or, or in healthy relationships with other human beings, you can develop a secure, more, uh, you know, more secure style. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and another area that you then go into, you know, once we're better at identifying what we need and how we're feeling and working on communicating that, that, that boundaries too are really important. And that's part of being assertive is Mm -hmm. being able to address what our boundaries are. But I just wanted to read a little bit from the book because it really resonated with me. (laughs) Right. Not everyone will feel grateful when you're assertive. You'll likely get a variety of responses as you start speaking up more frequently. Keep in mind that assertiveness skills aren't about pleasing other people or about elevating yourself above others. Assertiveness is about treating yourself as an equal with others and taking ownership of your well being while respecting others' differences. Like that is so lovely when, Mm. you know, hearing it. (laughs) Did I write that? That, You did. It makes a lot of sense. But I think sometimes the fear is when I start speaking up for myself, one, yeah, everybody's going to leave me or 
I'm going to be hated or mm-hmm. yeah, that, that, that people will no longer want to be around me because here I've been so accommodating all this time or mm-hmm. yeah, people pleasing. And, yeah. but it's not just about them. It's about you too. Like right. respecting what you need. Right. And, and women tend to be socialized to please other people and be in tune with other people's feelings, thoughts, needs, and wants. Yes, <laughs> and so, you know, that it take it takes some time and uh, to process identifying that. And then you've kind of, you're into the, the fourth aspect, which is self-expression. So actually expressing, setting the boundary, expressing what you want, talking about your feelings, that's all part of self-expression. And we fear disconnection if we do that, but it's actually the thing that connects us. Right. Right. Yeah. Like that's the twist, right? Right. <laughs> we're right. Like We're like so afraid that it's going to make things, yeah, more disconnected when that's really what connects us. Right. The, the authentic expression and sharing your feelings, thoughts, needs, and wants with other people. That's how you are known. That's how you have intimacy, (laughs) emotional intimacy. And so we shortchange ourselves when we hold back and don't communicate those things in our relationships, whether it's work or, you know, love relationships or family relationships, community. Um, That's how we connect with people is that self-expression. Well, and people don't know us, right? Like don't mm-hmm. truly know our authentic selves if we don't know how to express ourselves. Right. Right. Or if we don't know who we are that, in the yeah, first oh, place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I tend to be more avoidant. That is that tends mm-hmm. to be my attachment pattern. And, you know, recognizing that when my feelings were hurt, and I didn't speak up for myself, nobody would know. Like the, right. nobody was knowing that I was getting triggered and hurt and shut down. And then I'd be upset and mad all just in myself, right? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. but then recognizing mm-hmm. that how would they know that they might be hurting my feelings if I wasn't saying it? Right. They can't repair the relationship rupture if you aren't telling them Mm -hmm. (laughs) that, that there's been a rupture in the relationship that you feel bad, that, that something they did or said has impacted you. And yeah, Yeah. Yeah. we want to be known and that's, that's the way we're known. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I have memories of uh, an old friend saying like, you never get mad. Like, what is that about? (laughs) And me being like, I just don't, I don't get mad. And I'm like, Hmm. No, that's probably not true. Right, right. <laughs> Just right. learning how to express that anger has taken a long time. Yeah, well, good work. <laughs> so, you know, you mentioned later in the book too, like the piece, the self-compassion piece, which mm-hmm. I am just, I love Kristen Neff's work mm-hmm. and just it's made a huge difference in my life, just being more compassionate towards myself. Mm -hmm. So why, but why is that such a big part of this journey? Well, this, this process is all about knowing ourselves, being more of ourselves. And in that process, we're going to make mistakes and we're going to hurt people and we're going to stumble. And so the practice of self-compassion can really help calm us down, calm down our shame. Like this is, you know, the way self-compassion is the way we treat ourselves when we're suffering. And so treating ourselves with kindness and recognizing that everyone suffers can help us not withdraw from relationships, but go toward other people because they know suffering too. They've, Mm -hmm. they've been hurt too. Yeah. Yeah. And that shame piece is so present, I think, I guess for everybody, but women in particular, I feel like that shame shows up so often Mm. unrecognized, Mm -hmm. you know, that sort of critical voice and yeah, just that feeling like we're unworthy and Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 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 It's a familiar feeling for me too. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. You know, we've talked about what can lead to us kind of 
what's happened in our childhoods and why we might have a difficult time expressing and asserting ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when it's time to express ourselves, like what are some of the steps that, you know, you suggest in the book? I know the the sentence of I feel Mm -hmm. when you makes me think. Yeah. So are there some, are there other steps that are important to remember when we're starting this journey? Yeah, remembering the importance of nonverbal communication. So if you are making, you know, setting a strong boundary, make sure your body language isn't canceling out your boundary or Mm. your expression. So if you, you know, you want to be standing up straight, making eye contact, you want your voice to match the message you want those things to be congruent. And so that nonverbal is a mm-hmm. bigger than the verbal communication. <laughs> so it will trump what you're saying if your body language, you know, if you look timid or you're looking away and your head's down and, mm-hmm. and all of those things, you're, you're sending the message, don't take me seriously, don't really listen to me. I don't really, yeah. you know, I'm not really yeah. strong. <laughs> yeah. So nonverbal is, is key just your physical stance, your being in your body. And Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. Well, you think about, yeah, when you're in someone else's presence and that they're not feeling firmly, you know, I guess I'm just thinking of some clients who do struggle with assertiveness and that sometimes for me, I can feel the timidness even in their, you know, their struggle to be heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It makes a big impact. Yeah. So if people were just starting on this journey, wanting to know more about themselves and be more assertive, what would you suggest is a good place to start? Oh, I think asking yourself, what do I think, feel, want, and need is is a good place mm-hmm. to start. Like, what do I actually need to communicate? <laughs> hmm is that a lot of women can't answer that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to be self-expressed when you're not sure what to express. That is a fact. That is a fact. Yeah. And that's such a hard I know I've I've suggested to some of my clients, you know, just taking time throughout the day, just not even when you're triggered, not when you're reactive, but just like checking in, like, what do I need right now? Mm -hmm. Sort of getting into the habit of checking in versus Mm -hmm. always sort of looking out at whatever else is going on. I love that. Yeah. Mm. Well, this has been really enlightening. As I said, I really, really enjoyed your book and I recommend it to my clients. So that's awesome. And I just am so appreciative of you coming on the podcast. How do people find you? Oh, talk to us about your podcast too, because oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I just learned that you have one. So that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so it launched in February and it's called Ask Dr. Julie Hanks. And I have just regular people on there who have a question for me and I coach them through their question and we just have a conversation. So it's just kind of a window into someone's challenge or struggle. And my goal is that in every episode, listeners will have something valuable to take away, even if they're not dealing with the exact same struggle of the Mm. guest on the show. Mm. Uh, So it's been really fun to, to do. I love just, I love people. I love talking with people. It's fascinating. And yeah, it's been really well received, which is, you know, I see on the cake. That is, that is. And typically are people coming, are the guests coming to you about sort of a narrow range of topics or is it just any sort of struggle? Um, They tend to be about relationships or like self-worth, self-value. We also cover some issues about faith and religion. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, you know, just kind of a wide variety. Nice. That's awesome. Well, I'll have to tune in and put it in my subscribe list of podcasts <laughs> to listen while I'm driving around. And it's short. It's like 20 
Yeah. Most of them are about 20 minutes. Some, there's one that was 40, but yeah. yeah, So it's, it's been a great project. Nice. That's awesome. So how do people find you? On social media, I'm at Dr. Julie Hanks, Dr. Julie Hanks, or drjuliehanks.com is my website. And yeah, those are the best ways to connect with me. Cool. And people can find the book where? Anywhere? <laughs> yeah, The Assertiveness Guide for Women. You can find it in some local book shops, but you can also always find it on online, on different, you know, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, those yeah. places. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Well, again, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for the invitation, Elizabeth. This week's episode is brought to you by three invitations to come home to you. We all have different parts or voices we hear that can influence how we act, how we feel, and how we engage with the world. When we can get curious, and learn more about all of our parts with compassion, we begin to feel more at home in ourselves. I'd like to invite you to explore some of your parts with the three invitations to come home to you. When you sign up, you'll gain access to the prompts that will be your guide to help you get to know you and your parts a little bit better. To get access to your prompts and find out more about working one-on-one with me, go to elizabethcushcoaching.com. That was a great conversation, and I really enjoyed talking to Julie about her book, about self-compassion, about boundary setting, about being assertive, and why that can be so hard for women in particular, but hard for a lot of us. As I said, the book is easy to read. It's digestible. If you're looking to know more about her or this process of being more assertive, I suggest that you pick up her book. I think one of the things that is really sort of crystallizing for me in my journey of healing is just how interconnected all the pieces are. As you get curious and learn more about yourself, better understand how you're feeling, soothe yourself through self-compassion and find your voice and expression. It's just a beautiful flow. It just opens up so much in us. It allows us to live more authentically to feel more at home in ourselves, and to be comfortable with all the feelings that show up every day in all of our relationships. Well, I hope you enjoyed this conversation and you'll check out Julie's work, her podcast, her book. Again, if you're interested in working with me, you can go to elizabethcushcoaching.com and find me there. Have a wonderful week. Take care of yourselves. Tune in. Ask yourself what you need in this moment. Ciao for now from This Woman Warrior. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Woman Warriors Podcast. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Music was written and performed by Andy Cush. If you'd like more information on this episode, you can find the show notes, the resources shared today, and links to the guest profiles at womanwarriors.com.